twice. And uh Cody, one of these days, with a little bit more practice, is going to end up being our full time bass player. Caitlin's going to look back. But we practiced this the other night, and Caitlin said, Man, I want to play drums on that. So we started flip flop. And it was pretty awesome, actually. That, the song actually fits her really well. But I love the words of this song, Who You Say I Am. Oh, yeah.
Tickled to see you back. Missed you. Good to have Brother John Miss Kim. So many back with us this morning. Miss D and all her family. It's great. It's great to see folks. We're missing a lot, uh, but we've got a lot back with us. Tickled you here. You're running well. Anybody else? Worship's contagious. You might want to catch it. You sure? I'm going to throw the schedule out the window. Got your Bibles? Look with us this morning. The book of Second Corinthians. If you got your Bibles, yes, man. I don't know how everybody else does. I feel like that new song one we need to keep. That, that, that's got some mileage in it. I'm looking forward to it. Book of Second Corinthians this morning, chapter number five. If you're okay with us throwing out the schedule, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Second Corinthians chapter five. If you're able this morning, stand with us. Reading God's Word. My, how I appreciate uh, the good singing. I appreciate good Sunday school. Uh, Brother Josh fed us real good in the adult class. Uh, talked to Ethan and Chase. Uh, they got good eating downstairs. I, I, I've got confidence in our Sunday school teachers. Uh, and I thank God for them. Uh, while we were out, our Sunday school uh, teachers did a lot of work to make sure our kids. Uh, Kept good Sunday school outside of church. And I appreciate our Sunday school teachers for being that way. Don't you? Amen. Amen. Um, I, I know I'm odd sometimes in reading. And I feel like this morning might be another one of those times. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 14. If it's okay with you, I'd like to read that first phrase. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 14. Reads this way. For the love of Christ constraineth us. We'll let go of that one more time. For the love of Christ constraineth us. That's the reading of God's word. You can be seated if you will. Pray with us. Our Father in heaven, we look to you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. God, you're an awesome God, and we can't thank you enough for being that. You're our help, you're our counselor, and you're our strength. You're our friend, Lord Jesus. You're our sibling, Father. You're our father, Lord Jesus. You're everything to us. God, you're the person that pays the bills. Lord Jesus, you're the person that puts food on the table. Lord God, you're the one that keeps us calm. 
You're the one that gives us strength to stand. Anything good, you are. Amen. And I thank you for being that. Thank you for worship. Thank you for a church that's worshiping. Father, I thank you, God, for rejoicing. Thank you, God, for people that, Lord, no matter their moments, no matter their bad times, God, they can still take time to let you love them yeah. and us love you in return. God, I'm asking you, Lord, I, I feel like you're moving real strong today. I feel like you're helping us. God, help me be a part of that. Don't let me get in the way of it. Lord, put a guard about my mouth that I'd only say the things you'd have us to, and I'd steer clear of things you would not. Remind somebody today, God, that they are loved, and they are loved by you. Yes. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God for being here today. Uh, I'd have to admit, uh, we're, in a, we're in an odd place. You preachers know where we're at. Uh, I've had a message now for some time, uh, and I have felt all week God was going to let us stand this morning on it, and uh, I uh, got up and uh, took, took the blessed dog out. And don't worry, it didn't preach to it. It's all right. Uh, took the dog out, and I was just sitting there looking out the back porch. I, I was, God dealing with my heart about some scripture. I was up late last night, and he's dealing with us. I said, well, God, that'd be good to get to sometime. And I don't know, Pastor Bob, the more the morning went, uh, God just grabbed what I thought I was preaching and said, put that on the back burner. We're going here today. Uh, so I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Um, if we could preach you a title this morning, preach you a thought, I want to give you this title, His Love Can Keep Us. His Amen. Love Can Keep Us. Amen. 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 Uh, I, I want to say this before we get preachy. Um, and I want you to listen, if you will. Um, you are loved. Yeah. Amen. Are we all right just settling down yes. right there? Yeah. Amen. <coughs> well, I feel like we just need to echo that for a second. You are loved. Amen. And that's not from my eyes. And, and I promise I love you with all my heart, all of my soul. Thrilled to, thrilled to my being that God's put us here. Um you're loved by this church, everyone in here. Uh, start to listen and, and, and listen to the singing, and the Spirit starts moving, starts blessing. And, and I don't know, it, it might just be me, uh, but I start thinking about what folks are going through in the church. Different folks, different individuals. And just, all I can pray for our church this morning, God just love them. Just love them. I, I want to echo, you're not just love from the church or from your pastor. You're loved by God. Yeah. Don't, don't go a day in your life and ever, ever, ever feel like you're not loved. Mm -hmm. Because here's the truth. Even if people don't, even if circumstances don't, even if the person in the mirror doesn't love you, there's a God in heaven that loves you. Yeah. Chase, that sounds awful contemporary, awful modernized times. Hey, listen to me, friend. We, we need in today's time to know that there's a God that loves us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I want to say this. I have seen, and we're getting there. Uh, I know. Just pray. Um, I have seen folks do crazy things when they're in love. <laughs> Help. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I, I have questioned, uh, I, I, I'll steal this, I, I have seen kids in school, and they'd say, and I'm not talking about high school, going into college, I'm talking about fifth, fourth, third graders. I, I, I can see a third grader, and he gave his lunch to his girlfriend. It's a crazy thing to do when you're in love. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the truth. You'll do crazy things when you're in love. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, I can remember, and, and again, I, I beg your patience. I can remember when Faith and I were dating. Uh, Josh, I had just got back from Indiana. I had seen her for a few days. But, man, I was in love with her. I got home, Miss Christy, and something inside of me said, why don't you just go back? You ain't got nothing to do the next few days. Just be around the one you love. I called my mom and I said, hey, just want to let you know, I'm going back to Indy. 
And she said, well, why? And I said, I just want to see her one more time. I said, you just saw her. <laughs> but I'm in love. Whether we admit it or not, we do things that other folks might question because we love somebody. Whether it's our families, whether it's our kiddos, whether it's our churches, we do things that people question because we love them. But can I give you a questionable act? Jesus Christ left his throne in glory, left every riches, left everything, every bit of glory, every bit of purity, left it all in glory. Why? Because he loves us. Yeah. Amen. He is the definition of doing crazy things when you're in love. People are, 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 are and I'm getting there, I promise. People, we, we put love into folks and we never know if that love's going to come back. And there's a chance, Brother Larry, that that love may not come back. It might not get returned. But can I declare this to anybody that's with me this morning? Jesus Christ left the portals of glory, left the angels, left the Father, left the Trinity, left it all uh, to love us knowing that there would be atheists that would come up. Amen. Knowing there would be Satan worshipers that would come up. Knowing that there would be hypocrites that would arise. Knowing uh, that there would be people that have more excuses not to live for Jesus uh, than reasons to live for Jesus. Amen. Uh, knowing that as time went on, uh, there would be good things that would happen in people's lives. And uh, my goodness, people would say, thank you, God, for the good things. And God, I just love you so much for that good thing. And then the very next moment, something bad would happen. And they would look and say, God, what happened? Why would you do that? Uh, but yet Jesus leaves the portals of glory. And he says, I'm going to leave. And I'm not going to regret it. Amen. Amen. Tears since the foundation of the world. 
told me, Brother Scott, his love so amazing. Amen. Oh, my goodness gracious. If you don't get nothing else out of today, I want you to focus on the amazing love of God. Amen. And not just his love for everybody else. Because here's the facts this morning. We can get caught up in how much God loves everybody else. If I was a betting man, I'd say that we've said to ourselves, I know God loves people. And I know he loves little children. And I know he loves the good people. But he don't love people like me. Can I say this to you, my friend? If you'd have been the only people that would have ever been created, Jesus would have still ever been a love that he had just for you, amen. Goodness gracious, his love keeps us. My friend, I mean, you've got this Jesus. Hey, man, this little grow up. Hey, man, be a teenage boy. And the next time we see him, hey, man, he's 12 years old. Hey, man, get married and Joseph. Y'all will have to breath. Hey, man. Now listen, now we see Mary and Joseph holding hand in hand with Jesus. I'm taking him down up to the market. Hey, man. I'm like taking him to the temple. Hey, man, they go with Jesus. But they forget Jesus. How can I say something to you? Even though you have forgot about Jesus, but Jesus ain't forgot about you. Amen. Amen. Can we go ahead and get our flesh real quick? There's sometimes we forget to read our Bibles. Amen. Amen. There's sometimes we forget to pray for this one. We forget to pray for that one. We forget to be the reverend. We forget to be the preacher. We forget sometimes. But I'm glad in the moments that I forget him. At the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 29, verse number 11. When I forget about him, Courtney, he's still got thousands, thousands, thousands of thoughts toward me. And one of those thoughts, Miss Dinah, have thoughts of goodwill, have thoughts of peace. And what are those thoughts going to do, Zoe? And they're going to give us an expected end. And well, what's that expected end? And that expected end is Romans 8 and 28. For this we know that all things work together for good. And for them that love the Lord and are the call according. Have y'all ever been excited about something? Amen. And you realize that other folks ain't as excited as you are? I feel like I'm real excited this morning. And the rest of you are wondering why I'm so excited. Because I've got a real God that loves me in a real big way. Amen. Now listen. I'm telling you. You've got a God that loves you this morning. But we need to look on if we can. Can I say this to our youngins in the house? Our youth in the house. There Jesus was. Amen. And this is what we don't read in the Bible. Can I look between the lines this morning? Amen. We don't see from zero to twelve. We don't see it. We pick up with him at twelve. But can I say this to anybody listening? Mary was blessed with the responsibility of putting Jesus to bed. Amen. That ain't going over good, but it's okay. Jesus, amen, Mary, and Joseph was put with the responsibility of singing Jesus a good night lullaby. Amen. Amen. I wonder what they sound to it. Amen. You've got the whole world in your hands.
she got the blessing of seeing him crucified. No, no, no. She also got the blessing of looking in the tomb. And she didn't see anybody. And she looked around. Every time one of those angels 
bullet for my life any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Yeah. But can I declare, I cannot get back up for her. I've got a God that loves her so much. Yeah. Hey, man, that not only yeah. would he give his son to die, yeah. but that his son would live a perfect life yeah. in an imperfect world. Yeah. I'm not just carry a cross, a wooden tee, yeah. but he carried me and you up Calvary's cross. Amen. Yeah.
I say this to you? But here's what he's doing, Joshua, the cross at Calvary. His love is holding us together. Pastor Bob, I'm not able to keep my sanity. I'm not able to keep my stress from overcoming me. I'm not able amen, to keep everything in my mind this day from just wrecking my life. Y'all might be quite a bit better than I am. But here's the truth. Every moment of your life, there's something that's begging for your attention. There's something that's begging for your strength. There's trials of this life that are desiring to sift you as we. There's no points in this life that are desiring to keep you low. There's hurt in this life that's desiring to keep you hurt and never let you heal. If it was the devil's goodwill, he'd keep you weak and you never know. You never know that you can be strong. But can I preach to anybody that's with me? I am weak, but in him I am strong. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I'm telling you, my friend, he keeps my weakness. He's holding my life together. His love constrains me. Listen, my friend, when I cannot be held together by my family, amen, I've been in the funerals which I know. I'm where nothing else would help a family member. And then out of nowhere, the love of God would step in, Brother Brad. I've been in the hospital rooms where nothing else could help anybody. But the love of God would come in. I've been in the courtrooms where nothing could help nobody. But the love of God came in. How can I preach to anybody? When you want to fall apart, the love of God will keep you together. It keeps me. I want to preach here one more time. I don't know if anybody in this room's ever felt like quitting. But the love of God is what's kept your resignation from being turned in. Amen. Every time you walk up to God and say, God, I'm done preaching, God takes your resignation, rips her in half, and says, I'm sorry, but you keep preaching because I'm going to preach it. Every time you go up to God, and you say, I'm done being a Christian parent. I just can't do it anymore. God, I'm, I'm done. I'm sorry. Of the struggles, of the stress, of the negativity, everything that's going on. God, you can't expect me to live like this. And you hand in your resignation as a Christian parent. And God rips her up right in front of you and looks at you and says, I loved you when you was a baby. And I loved you. Amen. When you kept me up all hours of the night because you wouldn't go to sleep. And God looks at you. And he says, I went to every doctor's appointment with you. And God looks at you. And he says, I went to school your first day with you. And I went through kindergarten and middle school with you. I went through high school with you. And God just rolls his eyes and says, What matter, man? Say man. And God looks at you and says, I went with you on your first day of work. I went with you in your career. I went with you on your dates. I went with you in your marriages. And there were many, many times that my love I could have resigned. It could have ended. But I saw you. And there was something inside of me that could not stop loving you. And I declare, I've got to look at every Christian parent and say, the love that I kept for you all your life, I'll keep it. And I'll constrain in your heart and in your being how that you can love that baby in its terrible tunes. How you can love that teenager how when they don't want to go to church. How you can love that young adult how when that young adult's life has fallen apart and you don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. How but God says, I'll help you love them. How listen, I'll love you. I'll help you love that kiddo on his or her wedding day. I'll help you love that kiddo. How when they're in the labor room. How there's never ever a time. How because my love won't fail for you. How that I'll allow your love how to fail for your kiddos. I say, well, glory. Can I ask you this morning? And we ain't far from being done. Where would you be 
if it had not have been for Jesus. Can we take a look at that real quick? Well, Chase, we wouldn't be here because God the great. I'm not asking about your creation. I'm talking about the hard times in your life. What would you have done if it had not been for God? Is anybody there? When everything fell apart, if it had not have been for God, what would have happened to you? The moments that you were so angry, if it had not, don't, don't sit there and act like we're that good. We've been angry before. In the moments that you were so angry, but something constrained you, had it not been for God, what would have happened? I can tell you, amen, and I want to say a couple things here. There's a dear lady, dear girl, was raped by a man of God, supposed, and her daddy found out about it and took a gun, had it to his head, was going to walk out, get in his truck, and go kill that man because he did ungodly deeds to his dog. And I can see some mothers and some fathers' eyes right now saying, better believe it. Amen. Father God, let me hit one step. You put the pedal to the metal, take care of business. But he got in that vehicle, slammed the door, Brad, and you'll know what happened. The love of God met him in that pickup truck and melted his heart. You're going to tell me that there's been some times you could have made some real horrible mistakes because it was in your being to do so. But the love of God said, no. What about at your low points? At the low points of your life, when your life wasn't worth living anymore. And the love of God stepped in. Is anybody else glad of that beside me? Amen. Can I give you what the love of God constrains us, Cody? It keeps us from doing what we want to do. It keeps us from doing what we feel like doing. It keeps us from being harmful to ourselves, harmful to others. There are sins that are begging for us. There are routes that are begging for our attention. You don't have to trust God. You can just throw your life away. Have your life's a mess, you just throw it away. Have your angry, and you can always ask forgiveness. Have my goodness gracious, have so and so did this. Have the church did that, the pastor did this. Have my brother, my sister did that. And all of it's justified, and the world's doing this. I, well, I want to do that, but I want to preach to you on the cross at Calvary. God could have called for 12 legions of angels to come rescue him, but the love of God toward us kept it from happening. Amen. I don't know about anybody else. We're finishing. I don't know about anybody else, but I need the love of God to keep doing what it's doing. Amen. Amen. It's keeping my boat to sail. It's keeping my life living. It's keeping my ministry. Help! Can I ask Soul's Heart or something? We're teaching, I know. Chase, how do you feel like the message is going? I ain't worried about preaching about the love of God. I'll be going very good. One of the first times I was here, Miss Rhonda, Pastor Bob, and Brother Rob, they showed me a picture of when this church was burned to the ground. Help! Y'all went south. It makes me wonder if y'all remember that or not. How many times, Bob, could this church have split and the love of God held this church together? Amen. How many times has your families almost fell apart? How many times has your life almost fell apart? How many times has destruction been at your door? And the love of God said, no. How many times could you have said something that would have cost you? How many times could you have done something that would have cost you? How many times could you have offended? How many times could you have hurt? 
How many times could you have got even? How many times could you put somebody in their place? How many times? How many times? How many times? But the love of God said, my stick's bigger than your stick. My vengeance better than your vengeance. I can get their attention a lot better than a Facebook post can. I can get their attention a lot better than a tweet on Twitter can. I can get their attention a lot better than you can. Let me be God. Let me love you. Let me have you. Because whether I will admit it or not, there have been a plenty of times that me and you was bound for trouble in one way or the other, dead set in our ways. Hey, I believe in God. We'll close here. I believe in God, free will. I do. I don't believe we're puppets. But I do believe there have been times that we were so dead set on destruction. And God said, I'm sorry, but I believe I'll stop this here. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm sure thankfully did. Amen. Can I ask you something? We're closing a couple words. How many of y'all have ever been yelled at? I'm talking about good parents. How many of y'all have been yelled at by your parents? Anybody? Matthew makes me nervous. I didn't get the question all the way out. So, boy, you better believe it. Right here. Pray in God forever. Amen. And boy, it hurts you. Things were said. It wasn't just what was said, it was how they were said. My dad's a professional yeller. He'll watch this later, and I, I'm a tickled dead about it. It's fine. But you want to know something that cut me to the bone? I'll never forget, Cody, and I'm still on. You got my word. I'll never forget I brought a D minus home on a report card, Miss Karen, and I plugged it at it. Because I didn't care about the grades. Hey, pass it. And if it had been an F, it meant I had some fun. <laughs> Bloody. And Dad looked at me and he said, can I ask you something? I said, sure, Daddy. And he said, you're telling me God let me and your mother adopt you just so you can make a D? I said, yeah. Looks like it. And he said, God saved you so you can make a deal. Yep. So he loves you so you can just make a deal. And I said, get to your point. And he looked at me and said, you want my point? I'm disappointed in you. Get out of my sight. That's all it took. I didn't need yelling. didn't need screaming. Just the fact that he said, I'm disappointed in you. Get out of my sight. Cut me the bone. And I, I did that. I did exactly what he asked. Y'all all right right here? I did exactly what he asked, Miss Kim. I got out of sight. I ran in the woods. I built an altar about six months before I had built it in the woods, Miss Christie. And I said, I'll stay here until I die if I have to. And I went up there and cried my eyes out like a little baby. Three hours later, I saw my sister's cars just fly out, Miss Hannah, just one after one. Dirt flying everywhere. I saw my stepmom's car just fly out. Bradley said, I wonder what's going on. So I walked in the house of Miss Caitlin, and Dad was on all fours on the ground crying. Well, I was hurt. Nancy, I felt like he had a right to be hurt. And I said, what's wrong with you? And he said, we couldn't find you. And I thought you ran away. And I couldn't stand the thoughts of me losing you. Amen. Amen. Here's the facts. If you're away from God this morning, you've said some things and done some things, Talking to everybody. I feel like this is for a lot of us. Yeah. Said some things, done some things, let some feelings set up your soul. 
You don't need to get right because God's holy. I get that. He is. But you, you, you hurt the one that loves you the most. Anybody there? I can tell you all day long that you need to be in church. Because it's your duty, you join the church, you're part of the covenant, get here. But here's the facts. Brother Brad, if we're coming out of duty, sooner or later, you ain't going to love it. But if you can realize that the reason you ought to be who you should be has nothing to do with nothing else besides God's loved you too much Amen. for you to be anything less. I'd like to pull Tim Lay on you. Tim Lay's my daddy. I'd like to pull it on you and close it. Has God done everything that he's done for you? Just so me and you can be who we are right now. That's all right. Say amen. Amen. I'd encourage you this morning. If, if there's one thing, uh, as they're coming to get a song, if there's one thing that sticks out in my mind a lot, we've talked some this morning. I appreciate you for letting me. If there's one thing that sticks out in my mind, Miss Courtney and some of the rest of you all that's in education can recognize this. I've, I've been in those rooms where you've got a mostly disturbed student and they have lashed out, Hannah. And you have to call in the restraining team. And there's people that will come in and just restrain that student. But there was a person that had it in their parent order. She was a stay-at-home mom, Jerry. Had it in her parent order. If it comes down to restraint, call me. I want the restraining team. This is a fifth grade boy, under some odd pounds. He's putting the hurt on all of us. Well, it got the words for strength time. And we call. Here came this mama that's every bit of 110 pounds, five foot two. And she laid down the floor, sat down, wrapped her arms around that boy, and he just headbutted her bob and he bit her on the arm and he kicked her over and over. And we offered, hey, let, let us do it. Y'all still there? Mm -hmm. let, let us do it. No. You don't know what she would say every time, every few seconds. He'd headbutt her, she'd say, Mommy loves you. He'd pop, Mommy loves you. I love you. And you know what that boy would keep screaming? Let me go! Let me go! And he'd kick and he'd punch. And you don't know what happened. I ain't told this before because it's you need to be out of the state to tell something. When that boy started calming down, you don't know what he started screaming. Don't let me go! Don't let me go! You don't know something? There's a lot of times we're screaming and kicking and begging for God to let us go. Let me go! And we just keep lashing out at him. We keep doing what we're doing! God, every time he heard him, Jerry, he says, I love you. I love you. And you know what that turns to? It won't be long. We're going to come to a time that we're going to scream, don't let me go. Don't let me go. Amen. And what long they calm down? She's beat. She's bleeding from the nose. And that boy went around hugging her. I thought, dear God, I know what I've done. You beat on me for a solid hour. <laughs> and you all know what she did? She just wrapped him up. She just left him. Hey. There might be some folks here this morning. You need love from God. Well, I'll shut up. He's ready. Let's stand. Let's stand. There's God ready to love you. He ain't ready to cast you out. He ain't ready to give up on you. He's ready to love you. Come on, you come. Go ahead. Oh, 
report. Anybody, on, anybody in the church got something on your heart? Anybody on the Lord need to testify? Prayer request. Rhonda. Why? Yes, sir. Absolutely, friend. Pray much for Miss Rhonda. Please, please do. God can. Somebody else? Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight. Amen. Amen. 